Hello and welcome to In Stitches. Today on the bench I've got this lovely Janome. It's a 1600p professional QC model. Now this is not a brand new machine. It, I don't even think it's a current model. There is a replacement for this machine. I'll go through that later on. Uh, but I just wanted to go through and show you a little bit about this machine. It's targeted towards quilters, um, but it's perfectly usable as a standard sewing machine. The only thing you really have to remember is that it's a straight stitch only, so there's no fancy stitches, no zigzag, no buttonholes. So just dedicated straight sewer. And you know, there are advantages to that uh, over a standard machine, and that when I say standard machine, I mean something like something like this little um, Janome decor here. You know, that's that's what I'm calling a standard machine. You know, a fairly uh, bog standard type size. It's got all your pattern stitches and things like that. Whereas this machine doesn't have any of that. You can also see that this machine is quite a bit bigger than this little machine here. I'll, I'll try and get it in perspective there. You can see that this here, the one that I'm calling a standard machine, is quite a bit smaller. This one here has got a wider throat here. So that if we measure the standard machine here, we're looking at about six and a half inches between from the arm inside of the arm here to the needle. And on the quilting machine here, we're looking at nine inches. So what you lose in functionality with not having all the fancy stitches and whatnot, uh, you gain in other areas when you have a straight sewing machine like this one here. Uh, the, probably some of the biggest uh, advantages with a machine like this is you've got a very robust machine. You know, this is all metal, the, even the lid here, that's all metal. This little panel here is plastic, but I mean, the majority of the machine is, is decent uh, metal, you know, solid construction, and we'll get in and take a closer look at that uh, later on. You, you also get uh, other features like you can wind a bobbin whilst you're sewing, so you've always got a bobbin on hand. You've got a, you know, your standard hand wheel here, but you've got your nice easy stitch length adjustment here. You've got a nice big chunky reverse lever here, a little bit like you'd see on an industrial machine. This button here is your thread trimmer. It's an underbed thread trimmer, very similar to an industrial machine. Very handy so that when you end a seam, you can just hit this button and it will trim your thread, top and lower threads for you. Very handy. Uh, you've got speed control here. Now that's quite important on a machine like this because it's a dedicated straight sewing machine. It's a little bit faster or quite a bit faster than a standard sewing machine, a domestic sewing machine. Not as fast as an industrial, nowhere near it, but still pretty fast. So it's quite important to have your speed dial here. So you've got everything from your turtle to your hair there, right up uh, slow to fast there. We've got a bobbin winding button, I'll show you as I say later. You also have a needle positioning button, which is very handy. So you can tell the machine that you want it to always stop with the needle down, which is very good for pivoting. Or you can say, I don't want it always to stop in the needle position up. Now, as I say, I'll demonstrate this, these features later on in more detail. We've got a, a tensioner, main tensioner here. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. It's got a nice clear dial on it here, so you've graduated dial here. And this uh, little dial here, that's your pre-tensioner, so that just determines the length of the tail when the thread's cut, of the top thread. Um, we've got a little indicator here, that's for your foot pressure. With a dial on top there, you can screw your foot pressure down to give you more pressure on your foot pr press foot there. A little threading diagram on the front there, pretty handy. Reminder here that it takes an HLX5 needle, not a standard sewing machine needle. Standard sort of plain sewing type presser foot here. Now a plain sewer is what we call an industrial machine that just does straight stitch, just does plain straight stitch. So that's very similar to an industrial plain sewer. Even the throat plate here looks very much like an industrial machine. And uh, just the general construction is very much like a, an industrial. We've got a little hole here, you'll notice, uh, which you can plug in a knee lever. And I don't have that with me, unfortunately. 
but you'll know that, especially the Benina users will know that uh, Benina has a, an option on quite a few of their machines where you can plug in a, a knee lever here for lifting the press foot so you don't have to reach around and use the lever on the back here to lift your presser foot. You can go hands free and just use your knee to press against the knee lever that plugs in here. Uh, lots of brands have them, FAF and you know Genome have, has them as well. Needle threader, manual needle threader, pretty handy. Little thread stand at the back here. Little thread stand here, you can put two spools of thread on and that's required if you want to wind a bobbin while you're sewing. On the top here we've got a nice little threading diagram for the bobbin winder and the bobbin winder has an independent motor so you can wind a bobbin while you're sewing. Uh, if we just have a quick look around, around the back here, nothing much to see around the back. We've got down here we've got the on off switch, we've got the power input and the uh, input there for the foot controller. It's a fairly standard foot controller there. And we've got another plug here for installing a an optional thread trimmer. It's a little foot switch that you can put down beside your foot controller. So when you want to trim, you just hit the foot switch and it'll trim for you. And this particular machine came with a flatbed table extension here. Pretty handy. And that I think came with the machine. I'm not sure, not sure whether it's an optional extra or not, but you can see that it's uh, become a little bit yellowed. It's been sitting in the sun there, and uh, the previous owners had some sort of mat over here by the look of it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty handy. Nice sturdy flat table there. The in the accessory uh, box we've got a, a free motion quilting, you know, darning foot here. You use that in conjunction with this uh, heavier plate here. And what the heavier plate here effectively does is when you swap it over is it has the effect of um, disabling the feed dogs because the feed dogs aren't tall enough to come through the thicker plate. And uh, that's this, a similar effect to a drop feed mechanism. So yep, that's pretty handy. The bobbins, the bobbins here, they're a standard sort of uh, plain sewer, industrial plain sewer type bobbin, fairly common. You know, you get a few bits and pieces in the accessories there, screwdrivers, spool pin. There's a an edge guide that screws into this, this uh, piece here that I don't have with the machine uh, that came with it. So if we flip this up here, you can actually take that panel off and that gives you access to the bobbin case which is down in here. It's a side loading bobbin and very industrial like bobbin case and that's reasonably easy to install as well. So the bobbin loads just like a, a standard a bobbin case on an industrial machine. So we have if we pull the thread there it's turning the bobbin clockwise and we install that into the bobbin case. You'll also notice a spring down in there that's an anti-spin spring. So what can happen is if you're sewing very fast and you come to a dead stop, the inertia of the bobbin can cause the uh, bobbin thread to pull back after it's trimmed the thread. You've got the small tail sitting out. You'll have a short tail sitting out of the bobbin case when the automatic thread trimmer activates. It's just uh, and what can happen is if the uh, bobbin case or if the if the bobbin's got enough inertia and overspins, it can actually pull the thread back through the tensioner, just like this here. Just trying to get a grip on it. And you'll see that the tail's disappearing like that. And if the tail gets too short like that there, there's just no way that the machine will pick up the thread again for the uh, next row of stitching. And that's what can happen if you get overspin on a on a bobbin. And that's what that little spring there does is it stops that overspinning, the little spring down in here. And it's just a matter of reinstalling the bobbin case like so. Pretty straightforward. Anyway, let's take a look at the machine actually doing some sewing. Show you how to wind a bobbin there. 
So what you can do is you can set your bobbin thread uh, on the right hand spool pin. Either or, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but the little diagram here suggests the right hand spool pin. I'll just thread it through the right hand loop here. And we come down through this eyelet here and then across to the bobbin winder tensioner here and then we come in let's grab an empty bobbin there and place the bobbin onto the winder there and it suggests you know uh, putting the thread through the hole I don't like doing that I just uh, go around a number of times here engage the bobbin winder there and I'll hit the bobbin winding button there and away it goes now that will just wind until it's full and it automatically flick off now while that's winding there's no reason why you can't, couldn't carry on sewing and that's the advantage of the the system here uh, again more like an industrial system and we'll get a here we go that's the bobbin wound and I'll grab some thread here for the for the actual sewing side of it. So we just come up through the left hand loop there. And then we've got this arrangement here with the three holes on this bar here. And that, if you thread it through all three holes, you go down through the first one up over the bar and then down through the second one and then up over the bar and down through the third one just like that there and that has the effect of uh, stopping the thread from twisting too much and then we head down through the pretensioner here just like that um, just changing color and to a heavier thread so that you can see that a bit easier there Okay, so we come around um, the tensioner there, make sure you press the foot's up, that releases the tension there, you can see that. When I drop the presser foot, you'll notice that this here tensions up. Released, tension. And that helps with the thread pull right into the tension discs there. And we come around the bottom of the tensioner and up and over the spring here, that's the check spring. Like that and then under this bar here like that and you should see the little check spring just dipping down like that and then we come through that guide and then we thread make sure our take up levers at the top here it's very important we thread from right to left like that down through this guide again and then down through that guide there and I'll change the thread again because that thread's too heavy for that needle. I'll just change back to a finer thread there. Down through that needle bar guide there. Bring the needle threader down. And across. Is that the way it goes? Yep. Down and across there. And we thread just like that there. And so you'll notice there that it's threading from left to right. Again, like an industrial machine. <laughs> I'm not sure how many times I've said that in this video, but just suffice it to say that this is very much like an industrial. And then I can draw the bobbin thread up here. Just give it one full rotation. Take up lever at the top here. And we've pulled our bobbin thread up and we're ready to sew there. Now if I had the knee lever I could just use the knee lever to lower the presser foot uh, but I'll just use the lever on the back here and away we go. So that's full speed. And you'll notice that every time I stop the, the needle goes into the upper position there needle up position. Now if I, and you'll notice that the little arrow here is pointing to the up. Okay, if we want to start to do a little bit of uh, 
piecework or you know just general sewing really you really want to stop with the needle down and that's just a matter of touching the switch there so the little LED changes to the down position changes to red and that way you can just easily pivot your work there and every time you stop it'll always stop in the down position there just like that okay so we've got speed control here we've got the slow speed so that's full middle that's the middle and fast you've seen so and you've got all all of that in between as well you don't have to just have those three positions so that's your maximum speed setting there now I'll demonstrate the, uh, the thread trimmer so we're in the needle down position it doesn't matter I'll just go ahead and uh, hit the button there this button here and you'll see it do its trimming like that and there you have your thread trim and then you're ready to go just to start again just like that so pretty handy and if you're if you're in the needle up needle up position doesn't matter you can just go ahead and trim there as well easy as that now the nice thing about having a bobbin ready to go is that if you've run out of bobbin thread let's just pretend that I've run out of bobbin thread and I've got an, another bobbin ready to go up here what I can do is I can take out my empty bobbin let's just call that an empty bobbin there so what you can do is you can thread your newly wound bobbin or the bobbin that's waiting for you to use okay let's just draw up our thread here just like so and then we're ready to start sewing but before we do let's just get another bobbin ready to go this is my supposedly empty bobbin it's not quite empty but let's just for demonstration purposes use this one okay and if I flip on to bobbin winder and hit the bobbin winding mode here we should be able to sew at the same time let's just try let's sew and if I hit bobbin wind away it goes and I can sew and wind a bobbin at the same time so when I've when this bobbin runs out I'll have another one ready to go pretty handy just like that okay trim there uh, if I've got the presser foot up and I try and sew it won't go you'll see this error here foot press foot has to be down okay. uh, likewise if I try let's say I'm in the needle down position and I lift the presser foot do a pivot and then I decide that I just want to trim the thread instead uh, press foots up it won't let me it's error again here because press foots up Put press foot down we can trim there so a nice little safety feature there okay I'll demonstrate the free motion uh, quilting darning foot there just remove this press foot here just the one screw and two screws here on the throat plate now some models have a drop feed mechanism which I think would probably be quite handy excuse the background noise dogs and cars and airplanes it's very hot here again and I've got all the windows open <laughs> okay and then we put the so this is the thicker um, throat plate that goes on here and you'll see that has the effect of a drop feed there 
so the teeth here don't come up through the hole at all so it doesn't matter if you've got your stitch length set to full or you know not zero it doesn't matter because the teeth have absolutely no effect just screw that back down there just get a different angle there for you that literally just pops onto the presser bar there and tightens up nice and easy like that we'll let our foot down no we won't we'll do that in a second I'll just put the plate back on there okay I'll just draw up the bobbin thread there actually I can use the needle positioner can I yeah I'll just use the needle positioner button there to do one revolution okay and we'll just drag that down like that there so we're ready for some free motion sewing there this piece of material here okay my free motion skills are fairly non-existent so don't laugh <laughs> let's just have a go here I just need to working around the camera too that's my excuse <laughs> yeah that was my fault <laughs> so yeah I just uh, I bunched all the material up here and broke the thread so I think I, I can be blamed for that one but you know, there you go, you, you get the idea, so free motion there. You'd probably want to, you know, maybe have a wee play with the tension there. I mean, I'm using two completely different colored threads here. We've got purple on the bottom and we've got white on the top. You know, uh, could possibly get away with uh, loosening the top thread there, top thread tension, or maybe slightly tweaking the lower tension. Depends what sort of look you're going for. Um, but that's only two layers of cotton as well, so you know not a very good example there if that was um, you know had the batting in it and whatnot I'm sure that would look a lot better But yeah, that's just a quick demo of the free motion quilting there. I Don't really think there's much more I need to show you as far as the Workings of the machine. I'm pretty sure I've covered most of it Okay, let's take a quick look under the bonnet here. I'll get you inside for a close look or under the hood, I think you might say, in North America. We call them bonnets here, not hoods. Anyway, two screws, and the lid will come off. There's a connection for the bobbin winder here. I'll just disconnect that. And there's the lid there. Uh, metal lid nice there's the independent bob and winder motor there pretty handy plastic handle so you know there's a few little plasticky bits but plastic handle no worries plastic dial there now I'm probably going to compare this machine a lot with an industrial machine so excuse me if I repeat myself because I probably will I'd just like to show you you know uh, the similarities to an industrial there's the faceplate there, unscrew, pretty straightforward and we've got our little oil points here for the take up linkages, fairly standard. You may have noticed on the top of the uh, lid here there's a little oil hole here and that leads down to this here and that is an oil wick which wicks oil down you know to like this point here down to here to oil this part here uh, you'd need to manually oil this and that one probably you definitely manual manually oil the needle bar top and bottom bearings there's another oil point here you know so 
there's a it's not quite up to industrial standard because an industrial machine would basically oil itself from a an oil sump or some other mechanism uh, so you know in that respect it's not quite like an industrial machine there and this is your needle bar drive area here yeah fairly stock standard you know nothing much to write home about there we've got a drive belt here leading from the top shaft pulley to the lower shaft pulley and this this belt here that's your motor drive uh, belt so there's a motor down and behind underneath the thread stand actually is where the motor is and the uh, the motor drives this belt here okay a couple of sensors down here that'll be for the needle positioning I would assume a couple of sensors there okay let's get her on a back there and get this base plate off here uh, just the four screws I think there's those four Phillips now while I'm doing that, uh, so this machine's about eight years old, it's 2023, uh, I think it was a 2014-2015 model, not 100% sure, but at that time, back then, I think this machine was retailing for about 2,700 New Zealand dollars, so you can do the conversion on the New Zealand dollar to the likes of the US dollar, uh, just on the internet, and then you've got inflation calculators that will give you an idea what the uh, what it was worth in you know today's money back then um, but there are other models available now the replacement for this one is a Janome HD9 and as of 2023 they are 2300 New Zealand dollars uh, as I say you need to work that out for US dollars uh, there's there's also a Juki TL2200 model QVP available, uh, around 3,200 New Zealand dollars as of 2023, uh, just as a comparison. And the brother PQ1500 SL is around about $2,000 New Zealand in 2023. So that gives you a bit of an idea of comparisons there. And um, as you can see, this one's like brand new. I've given it a service, but um, it didn't really need a, a lot as far as servicing was concerned. But very solid construction, extremely well built. Uh, so we've got our drive pulley from the top end to the bottom end here, driving the main shaft here. And this here will be the trimmer. Yeah, that's, that's the trimmer solenoid there, the automatic trimmer. And its mechanisms here, foot lifter mechanism. Uh, we've got our feed mechanisms here. We've got a, uh, a gear in behind here that'll be driving the hook. That's our hook drive gear. And we've got a full rotary hook. Okay, and this is looking at endwise. That's our bobbin case here. We've got I've got the machine tipped back, so uh, but it is a full rotary hook here. So again, very industrial like, and it's a horizontal hook. This is our overspin. Um, that'd be an overspin stopper. So that will engage to stop the or to help stop the bobbin from overspinning as well once the trim is activated that's the that's the bobbin thread now I'll demonstrate the thread trimmer for you just keep an eye on this little guy here it's got like looks like a little eye and a little beak and this this here that's your stationary blades that one doesn't move but this one will and I'll initiate a thread trim there I don't have the machine threaded so um, it won't trim the thread as such but show you the mechanism there you go and yeah it doesn't like doing any more than two trims without sewing so yeah that's the thread trimmer uh, needles HLX5 these are yeah they have a flat shank on them they don't have a round shank like an industrial machine they are a, more like an, a domestic 
machine needle but not exactly the same. The instruction book is pretty good. It covers everything you need really to get going, knowing your machine, all the bits and pieces that come with the machine, how to connect the machine up, um, what the buttons do, you know, pretty much everything that I've shown you in this video here. But yep, very uh, nicely laid out, very clear diagrams and good, you know, English instructions and also French and uh, Spanish, I think, as well. So, yep, pretty good. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little overview and peek inside the Janome 1600P Professional QC sewing machine. I was very impressed with the build quality, that's why I thought I'd show you the machine and I'd be very happy to own one of these machines myself. It's a very capable machine and it's amazing what you can do on a straight sewing machine. For example, I use my little Singer Featherweight uh, for making shirts and the only thing I can't do with the featherweight is the buttonholes, although I could with the little buttonhole attachment, but I choose not to. I choose to use my little Elna uh, machine or my, or my new FAF 720 for doing buttonholes. You know, and of course you can't do the overlocking down the side seams and things like that on a shirt, but it's, it is amazing what you can do on a straight sewer. Yeah, very nice, uh, capable machine. And as always, thank you very much to my patrons on Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated. And if you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link in the description down below for the Patreon page. And you can get some early access videos there from time to time. And sometimes the odd exclusive. So check out the Patreon page. Yeah, so I hope you found that interesting and we'll uh, catch you in the next video.